0818-993-5757. Now, we all know about the cutbacks in the health service, but it's only when it affects your own family or so- suddenly arrives on your own front door that you really realise just how serious the problem is. When, for example, my first caller online this morning has a two-year-old daughter who is waiting urgently for crucial open-heart surgery. She's on a standby list for Crumlin Hospital in Dublin. But as the days go on, the child gets sicker and it's a huge dilemma for her family. I'm joined on the line by Gemma Lawler. Gemma, good morning to you. Good morning, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Your daughter's name is? Joy. Joy. Yes. She's two. She is. She's just gone two last Tuesday. Um, was she born with heart defects? She was, but she was adopted by us at six months and we discovered it after she was uh, adopted. So she's two years old uh, and I suppose to look at Joy, she is... Just like her name. She is. A bundle of joy. She has certainly lived up to her name beautifully. And she's a very good-humoured, um, tolerant, patient little girl. Although she may just prove us wrong in the next few minutes. But um, she's here with me at the moment and she's taken out her Play-Doh. But uh, she's, she's a very bright, very um, interesting or interested child and uh, full of life, or at least she has been. The last uh, few months then, she, her condition has deteriorated and she's no longer able to do the things that she used to be able to do and enjoy, and that kind of very much worries us and um, upsets us, really, you know. So what exactly is the problem with her heart? Joy has two heart defects. One is called an ASD, which is a hole in the heart, and the other one is pulmonary stenosis, whereby um, the aorta coming out of the heart is too narrow. And it's serious stuff we're talking here. It is serious stuff, um, but it's fixable which is, you know, I suppose the, the one positive thing out of this is it is fixable by um, open-heart surgery. Um, she has a very, very good chance of a long and healthy life once she has this surgery. But the problem is, and the reason you're on, I, I read a copy of the letter you have written to uh, Mary Harney, the Minister for Health. Thank you. Uh, and, I mean, it, it sums it all up. I'm not going to read it all because you can tell the story yourself. But the reality is, how long is she on standby now for Crumlin? Well, she was um, under the care of Crumlin um, from immediately after she came home to Ireland. Um, she's been seen every three months, but they told us last spring, early last spring, that she definitely would need um, open heart surgery. Um, and we've been on the standby for surgery from then. And then they decided they would try and do um, keyhole surgery on her heart. In other words, going in through the heart itself and trying to fix it from the inside. And she eventually got a date for that on September 1st. But that was cancelled um, a couple of days beforehand. <clears throat> and she was rescheduled for two weeks later. And she had that surgery, but it just didn't work. Her heart was too small and, uh, and the hole was too large to fix. So she was immediately put on the, um, the waiting list for open heart surgery. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that was in or around middle of September? Yes, mid-September. But we were told at that stage that there was 158 children on the list. And on average, we worked out that they're doing approximately three or four surgeries a week, even though their capacity is about 10. But they're only getting through three or four a week, uh, mainly due to um, cutbacks, mainly due to um, people who are on leave from ICU not being replaced. So even the beds that are there, even though they are inadequate in themselves, Sometimes they're not working at full capacity because um, somebody is on leave and the, um, their substitution is just not happening. There's a moratorium on cover for leave. So, so as these cutbacks continue at Crumlin, you're looking at Joy every day yes. getting worse. Yes. When you say she's not able to do the things now she was able to do, say, a month ago, what kind of things? Well, one thing that, you know, just brought kind of brought it all home to me was yesterday. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the, the poster campaign that we're running at the moment, but we have a lovely photograph of Joy on a swing in July. And she just absolutely loved going on swings, and she was a real daredevil and re- just really got a great kick out of it. And the photograph we have is her on the swing, and she's just full of joy. She's the epitome of joy. But yesterday she asked to go to the playground and we had a you know, good few minutes and it was warm so I decided to bring her. But she, she just couldn't go on the swing. And that was an activity that she really, really got a great kick out of. Is that because she just didn't physically have the strength? She just doesn't have the energy. You were afraid of falling down, were you? Okay, you were afraid of falling down. Baby. Yes, you went on the baby swing instead. Um, she's telling us here and yeah. she's correcting me as I'm going along. But basically it was a question that she'd lost her 
her courage and her energy to hold on to the swing. So she wanted just to go on the baby swing. And even though she was in the baby swing, she didn't want to do that either, you know. And then she went to the slide. And usually she'd be up and down the slide, you know, three or four times. But no, she just barely climbed the steps up to it and said, Mommy, tired. You know, and that really brought it home to me that, um, you know, she is deteriorating. She's more susceptible to fevers at the moment as well. Um, she just gets tired so much more often. Um, she had her little birthday party there two two weekends ago, and she was very listless and very tired, and she kind of gave up with activities fairly shortly after starting them, you know. But, I mean, she's so willing. No, no. No, you want to leave it on? Okay. Yeah, um... <laughs> Look, I'm trying to work this out. I was never good at maths, to be honest with you. But yes. if they're doing, say, approximately 16 operations a month, and there's over 100 and, what did you say, 150? 158, yeah. five weeks so, ago when yeah. we wet her. her so that would, that would sound like there isn't a hope in hell that she's going to be operated on this side of Christmas. Oh, absolutely not. Well, no, I, don't, I can't say absolutely not, because we were with her consultant yesterday with, you know, a planned... Uh, meeting with him yesterday and he was telling us um, very unlikely she's on the emergency standby list which means that if there's a cancellation or somebody can't take the surgery she, she may be called but um, you know uh, he said well we'll make a review date then the first you know first or second week in December and I was saying so she's not going to be seen by this, by Christmas and he said well highly unlikely and yet everybody realises her condition is deteriorating yes Yes. So what condition might she be in, Gemma, in January or February? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this is uh, midterm now, and I'm with her, like, 24 hours a day now. Yeah, you're I'm a school teacher by profession. I am a school teacher, a secondary school teacher by profession. Mm. But this week, like, obviously, she's home with me. But I see it more and more, and she needs much more um, attention, much more caring, much more minding. Um, I'm exhausted, to be honest with you, this week, and I don't know what it's going to be like as the weeks go on, um, especially as the winter comes in. And, you know, the more care she needs, the more um, one-to-one individual minding she's going to need. So my heart goes out to the poor little mite, but she's doing her best to entertain herself and, um, you know... I just want to read one paragraph of the email you sent to Mary Harney, which I think you sent to her last Friday. Thank you. You just said in one paragraph, I am begging you to recognise and rectify this ridiculous situation the government has put us in by withdrawing the agreed funding for the minimum necessary ICU beds in OLHSC Crumlin. There is a large team of highly qualified professionals standing around, unable to work and save lives on a weekly basis, and parents like myself unable to do their job for the state because a few nursing and medical posts are not staffed. The economics of this decision do, do not add up. How much money and resources are being disgracefully wasted by opting for this short-sighted measure. That's just one of the paragraphs. Do you think Mary Harney ever gets to read an email like that? Um, The more I think about it, the more I doubt it. Because I'm sure, you know, if we're crying out for help, I'm sure the other 158 families are too, and their friends and their families. And that's just the cardiac uh, patients. What about uh, patients with scoliosis? or other, you know, important critical surgeries that require an ICU bed at the end. You know, Mary Harney must be receiving hundreds and thousands of emails. So my feeling is that um, that she's receiving uh, far more than she's actually reading. And I think, you know, the best way to kind of get her to, to read a letter is to... Um, is to send a, a registered letter. I know it's, it's a pain to have to do that, Yes, that well, if, it, yeah. If you thought that it would make any difference, uh, then it would be a, a, a cheap way of doing it. But she's the, the the minister that's now Gemma trying to find over a billion euro in cuts. Yes, I know, I know. And I mean, the danger is that they might even uh, cut back on services in um, ICE, in Our Lady's Hospital. Is there a danger? And I hate asking this question, Gemma, but I want—I I think I have to ask it. Is there a danger that Joy could die? Yes, of course there is. Of course there is. She could go into... We're, well, we don't know how her heart is going to react. You lie down there, sweetheart. You lie down there and we'll get a nice little blanket for you. Yeah. Um, we don't know how it's going to, to affect her long term. I mean, for example, if she got the H1N1 virus, you know, thankfully she's top of the list to be vaccinated on Monday. And she will be vaccinated first thing, you know, to, to, just to, to protect her. 
But um, if anything happened to her to put her...